come with us now, if you dare, down a rickety staircase into a dank, dark basement. What awaits the Saturday Night Freak Show? <laughs> hey, thanks for listening to the Saturday Night Freak Show podcast. Coming at you every Saturday, whether you're ready for it or not, because we're on a mission to take over the world one brain at a time. Yours tonight. So thanks for listening. Uh, help us out with uh, you know our goal by uh, hitting that like or subscribe button wherever you found us. Leave us a review. We'll read that on our show. Um, but these are the internet radio superstars. Holly, Michaela. And I'm Colin. Sean is on assignment this evening. Mm-hmm. And tonight, Listener Choice Month continues. Mm. So far, we've watched, uh, this will be three of the movies that you chose for yes. us in the month of December. Yes. Mm-hmm. That means there's only one more to go. The most requested mm-hmm. movie. Yeah. You'll find out what that was at the end of the episode. That was we'll Barbarian. Do it. I was not here. Barbarian is great. I was not here for I it. I mean, it was my fourth time seeing it. Colin, how yeah. was it on your second time? Uh, so. It was great. Yep. Uh, you got to check out that episode. Yep. I, I feel bad that I was like, any, any comments was, about uh, Barbarian you want to get? I was really us? excited to watch that again because yeah. I only saw it the one time. Yeah. And I loved that movie. Yeah. It was that one of the reasons I didn't talk about it on our end of year is because yeah, I, I knew we were going to watch it and then I wasn't even here for it. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. That's a great movie. Mm-hmm. Love it. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't want to spoil anything because this isn't that episode. Yeah. yeah, you <laughs> yeah. The spoilers. You go listen to yeah. the, the Barbarian. Go see it. Episode, but I can yeah. confirm I do very much recommend Barbarian. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so tonight we watched a movie that was chosen by you. You. And it was. Return of the Living Dead. Ooh. From the year. 1985. Five. Good and year. something directed mm-hmm. by Dan O'Bannon. Yeah. Who wrote Alien? Yeah. <laughs> like this guy's legit. He's written a lot of good movies, but Alien most notably. Yeah. But he's only directed like two movies. Yeah, and we've done the other one that he did which was um The Resurrected. Oh, really? A movie with Chris Sarandon. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that okay. was yeah. But that one I, I know he complained that. that the the final cut was taken away from him. Yeah. Uh, he's an interesting guy, a weird kind of weird guy. He was part of the. Um, I can't like, imagine him being a weird guy. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, have you guys ever seen Dark Star? Mm-mm, the John no. Carpenter's first movie. So, like when John Carpenter and Dan O'Bannon were, um, you know, students. I think it was USC mm-hmm. or UCLA. Mm-hmm. Can't remember who has the film. Uh, but anyway, uh, they. As their their thesis movie, they did uh, Dark Star. So O'Bannon wrote it and it stars in it. Mm -hmm. Uh, So that has kind of a sense of humor to it. It's not a serious movie. It's like a spoof of uh, 2001. But then, yeah, he wrote the script for Alien. And watching the commentary, or not the comment, the the making of featurettes on the the Alien discs that have come out. Like, Mm -hmm. he really hates what was done you know what the producers he like yeah. he respects ridley scott because ridley scott had him on board mm-hmm. for like the rewrites and mm-hmm. stuff but he hates walter hill and <laughs> the, oh, those yeah. guys for just totally like bastardizing his intent but he also did um, we're bearing the lead here he wrote life force yeah well <laughs> yeah. Okay, i was gonna say alien doesn't really seem like yeah life speed. force does like yeah, like, yeah yeah <laughs> dead and buried is and, another one and invaders from mars yeah, yeah. both toby okay. hooper movies yeah. but yeah. that does kind of tie into this and total recall yep wow. well yeah this guy's this guy man it's a real seesaw yeah. croak of a career yeah. Isn't yeah. It? Yeah. no dan o'bannon is a legit, legit like yeah. hero of horror and sci-fi cinema yeah. of the 19 He's late quite an 70s icon. and 80s yeah, yeah. Uh, well, you mentioned Life Force, which yeah. he had written. Um, Life Force was ultimately directed by Toby Hooper mm-hmm. um, because Toby Hooper was originally supposed to do Return of the Living Dead in 3D in the 80s. I remember Ooh. this because I used to read Cinefantastique magazine mm-hmm. when the 80s boom, 3D boom was happening. He, you know, they said, Toby Hooper said his next thing was going to be Return of the Living Dead. And I'm like, oh, what? Um, I wonder what that would have been like. Less well, less comedic, probably? Yeah, because I guess the way... Well, first of all, I guess how O'Bannon got involved in this, um, Hooper took Life Force. Yep. And he was the one who recommended that Dan O'Bannon replace mm-hmm. him on Return of the Living Dead. But when O'Bannon came in, he rewrote uh, the script. So, all right. So there there is a debt here to Night of the Living Dead. George Romero's Night of the Living Dead, obviously, mm-hmm. right? So um, John Russo who co-wrote Night of the Living Dead with Romero. Those two had a falling out at mm-hmm. some point. And so somehow John Russo gets the rights to Living Dead. 
Okay. All right. That's why all of George Romero's movies are of the dead. Okay. Gotcha. Okay. Oh. <laughs> it's like a dot com dot net yep. situation here. Okay. So um, John Russo, you know, gets mad. I think that George Romero's gone his own way. George Romero's making Dawn of the Dead. So Russo writes a novel, The Return of the Living Dead, in the seventies. And that's the one that's, I think they bought an option to do that as a movie. But when O'Bannon came in, he basically threw out the script and the story from the novel and rewrote the whole thing because his whole take on it was, well, we can't do anything that George Romero has really done. And we have to go like a completely different way with it. To good separate. idea. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Very good idea. Yeah. And I think John Russo may have if my memory is uh, uh serving me here at some point in the 2000s and you worked at barnes and noble so you I may sure remember did. this when they reissued night of the living dead in like a 30th anniversary edition yes. it had new scenes in mm-hmm. it I that do remember was john that. russo makes sense now yeah yep. <laughs> like uh, time hopefully has forgotten all about this but yeah yep. he tried to punch up night of the living dead with yep. by filming new scenes and he got the zombie the the, the graveyard zombie to come back you yep. know he was 30 years older and yeah <laughs> yeah. So instead, we get this crazy, like, uh, punk rock um, zombie movie, mm-hmm. high energy, yes, crazy comedic mm-hmm. horror movie. Mm-hmm. Um, very unexpected. This is the same year that uh, Day of the Dead comes out. Is it very different movie. <laughs> very different movie from the legit, you know, father of, of the zombies. Mm-hmm. And this one outgrosses it. Because it was a major studio release and came out in every theater at the same time where Day of the Dead kind of expanded across the country. And yeah. Well, and I imagine you can cut a really fun trailer for this movie with zero effort, you know, yeah. like yeah. just put two, two of these scenes, any two scenes from this movie together and be like, go see Return of the Living Dead. And everyone's like, I'm sold, you know, mm-hmm. like, yeah. Yeah, Yeah, I mean, because even the trailer, it looks like a fun movie. I remember seeing the trailers for this when I was a kid, and I'm like, I want to see that. Had party time, the you know song, Mm -hmm. and all that. Yeah, great soundtrack too. So, who's in this movie? Who do we got here? Clue Gulliger. Yep. James Mm Karen. Tom Matthews. Mm -hmm. Linnea Quigley eventually. Yep. Miguel Nunez. Yep. Um, Well, I guess we should say so. You know, so some of these people, Clue Gulliger, Mm -hmm. right? Mm Mm-hmm. Like we've seen him in a we bunch. We just of- watched something with him. Yeah, didn't we? P- p- pretty recently. Yeah, we did. Uh, what was it? We've watched so many things with him. In I it. know. I know, and I'm I'm trying to think. It wasn't the uninvited. No. Was he on the uninvited? No, that was George Kennedy. And no, yep. it was like recently. No, he wasn't it. Yeah. My memory is failing me, but yes. No. We, we- <laughs> what <Yeah>. was it? <laughs> it was like within the last few months we watched. Everybody's something yelling him. at us right now. Yeah. It's like what was this? Uh, I didn't remind us. <laughs> Yeah, but I mean, uh, he, you know, has obviously done like a bunch of uh, genre stuff. Also, Nightmare on Elm Street Part 2 is probably like his next yeah. best mm-hmm. known thing. Um, James Karen, uh, veteran actor. It was from A Whisper to a Screen. Right. That's right. That was, was it. In, yep. Because his it. son now like put him in Feast. Do you remember Feast? Yes, his son, Fe- John I did like Feast. Unfortunately, I do remember it. <laughs> I think we mentioned it on that episode, didn't we? Probably. Yeah. I think we did. And probably, I think John Gulliger did uh, Piranha 2, 3, double D or whatever. Or Piranha 3, double D, whatever. So Clue's probably <laughs> in that. I haven't seen it. <laughs> yeah, and I think we said Clue's last role was Once Upon a Time in uh, Hollywood. Yeah. yeah. Who what wasn't a, in that movie? What a, My yeah. God, way everybody go. was in that movie. Yeah. What a way to go. Mm-hmm. That was, and we talked, I think we talked about that was a couple people's last movie. Yeah. 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 Uh, James Karen, uh, thanks to MF Mad, the keeper of the Saturday Night Freak Show Wall of Fame. We're inducting into the Saturday Night Freak Show Wall of Fame tonight because Ooh. James Karen was also in Girlfriend from Hell, an episode that we did like 100 years ago. We've been doing this for like 10 years, so a long, did, long time ago. And James played who in this movie? In this movie, he was Frank. Mm-hmm. 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 Um, and he was also in Congo. Yeah. Oh, yeah, okay. He was the college president in Congo, mm-hmm. which we did. Uh, Tom Matthews, as you, you mentioned. Friday the 13th, part six, Jason Lives. Which we did on this show. Mm-hmm. And he was also in one other movie, the one that refuses to go away, and that would be Mean Gun. Oh, my God. <laughs> the movie that will haunt Colin for yes. forever. That's like your degrees of Kevin Bacon for the freak show. Yeah, I know. Mean Guns. coming back to Mean Gun. <laughs> yeah. yeah, well, Tom Matthews, I think, was employed a lot by Albert Pune. Yep. Albert Pun. 
uh, director of that. So he was also in Nemesis and like mm-hmm. a bunch of other Albert Pond movies. Um, Miguel Nunez, um, probably best known, well, to the folks listening, uh, Friday the 13th, part five. Yes. And that meme, where it was the song that. Ooh, baby. <laughs> And then he dies because of bad enchiladas. Yeah, yeah the it's the damn enchiladas. Yeah, it's the, the best part of that whole movie. Yeah, I think it's like biggest. He was a lead in a movie called Juana Man. Anybody? Anybody? Yeah. Oh okay. wow. Oh wow. You really activated some memories of Juana Man. And I was like, I immediately had the thought of, oh, I really want to rewatch that. And then I. That thought, I bet it doesn't hold up at all. <laughs> Probably shouldn't. <laughs> Do you want it, man? Jesus. Yeah. I thought about that movie in a while. Yeah, I know, because, yeah, it's been lost to time, I think. Um, <laughs> I bet this. you that's an out of print movie. There's no one still making DVDs of Do you want it, man? I'm sure. <laughs> now we'll have to check. It's, yeah. available on, it's like Soul Man. Right? It's like, oh, still oh yeah. Yeah. Um, Watch, it's like $60 for a DVD of Do you want it, man on eBay right now. It's a secret gold mine. <laughs> Probably. Uh, Linnea Quigley, as you mentioned. Um, yeah, or Scream Queen. Yeah, endless list of credits, man. Where do you even yeah. start with her? She's been on the wall for a while. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but I, that's why I'm like, this is probably her the her most po- high profile movie. I think so. Because uh, everybody remembers she mm-hmm. gets naked, dances on a on a grave. For what stuff. reason? I'm like she you decide naked this <laughs> entire movie. Yep. <laughs> for yep. the entire movie. Yeah, yeah that's true. Uh, probably one of the reasons this movie has been seen as much as it has. Yep. I would think so. Uh, I thought this was a much bigger part of the movie because it was the only thing I knew about the, this movie oh, yeah. for a long time. Like I, This is my first time really actually giving this movie an honest watch. And I thought she was going to be in it a lot more because all I ever hear about from this movie is her. <laughs> and, and she's like a the third is, tier character. It is completely gratuitous. There is no reason for her to be no. naked in this movie. No. I know. No. It's great. Yeah. I mean, back in the day when you're just like, ah, fuck it. Yeah. <laughs> um, and who, uh, Dan, Don Calf, Calfa, uh, played Ernie. Mm-hmm. Uh, and he, the only thing that I remember seeing him in other than this, he was, he was a hitman. man. Weekend at Bernie's. Weekend at Bernie's. Yep. yep. So yeah, all these guys, and he had been around like forever, you know, he's yeah. another one of these guys that have been around forever. And like now return of living dead is the thing that he's remembered for. Mm-hmm. Um, Okay, so I guess, uh, why don't you set us up? So how do we get into uh, Return of the Living Dead? Because there's a little bit of a meta thing going on here. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so we have a medical supply facility. And, oh, it's the night before 4th of July, which now I know why everyone watches this on the 4th of July. <laughs> <laughs> on Instagram, every 4th of July, I was like, what is up with the Return of the Living Dead shit all being posted today? Mm-hmm. Again, there's not really a significance for it. No, no. <laughs> But but that's fine. Yeah. Give us more Fourth of July horror movies. You know, <laughs> I like fine it. With it. Yeah. yeah. Um. And Tom Matthews and James Karen are like the old guy and the young guy on the job working this place mm-hmm. and showing them the ropes and whatnot. And they got a bunch of hazardous material and body parts and all sorts of weird science shit. And he's like, "You want to see some corpses?" And one of the corpse tanks explodes and yeah. all this toxic he flat shit out, goes so out. He, like, he, they're he very, punches it. They're very, um, they're very on the nose with this. They're like, yeah. you know that movie, that that zombie movie, Return of the Living, or yeah. Night of the Living Dead? Yeah, it's based on a true story. Yeah. This yeah. is the story. And well, it like, starts off with like, yeah. and this is a true story, the names and the... All and the, the yeah. Yeah. yeah, I, I mean, yeah. the whole thing's a joke, right? Well, right. I don't, it's not all a joke because there is like this, it does... You know, as it goes on, becomes more and more a horror movie. <laughs> you know, I mean, maybe it's just that kind of that sense of uh, uh, fatalism <laughs> that it kind of has in, in it. Um, but yeah, I mean, it's just I don't remember any movie like before that at that time mm-hmm. that was calling out another movie. Like the movie exists within you know the world that this movie takes in. There, right. There's it's not like a sequel to Night of the Living Dead. It's acknowledging that Night of the Living Dead exists. Exactly. But here's but the true story. Th- this ain't your mama's <laughs> Night of the Living Dead. It's kind of the attitude of this movie, but it works. Yeah, because uh, um, so I guess the the story that that James Karen tells us is that even though the facts of the case were changed, there actually was like some type of well, he doesn't say zombies or anything. He just basically says that, you know, 30 years ago, there was, uh, or uh, you say it was like 14 years ago or whatever, there was a chemical spill that caused bodies to get up and walk around in the morgue. Mm-hmm. And the army contained it, put them in, in canisters, and shipped them off. But 
because it's the U.S. Army, they lost them. Yep. And they were delivered to this medical supply company, love and it. now they're in the basement. <laughs> I love just like an incompetent mishap being the setup for something like this. Yeah. You know, it's just mm-hmm. just shit luck. <laughs> Well, even before the credits, I mean, this movie does like this, uh, all these kind of setups Mm -hmm. for stuff that's going to pay off. We're introduced to, obviously, I mean, I thought those were great, uh, like with comic timing, like James Karen's great in those scenes where he's talking to Freddie, you Mm -hmm. know, Um, but then we're also introduced to the punks, which are Freddie's friends. Mm hmm. Which are kind of like a Scooby Doo gang or something like what? What's going on there with the the makeup of this group? Like, they're, yeah, they're eighties street youths, but like they all, like, each, but they each have a different personality, and they have to dress like a hundred percent head to toe, like their personality. Yeah, like video it's, game characters. It's like pick your own. You can be the jock, or you going to yeah. be like the virgin, or you going to be the nerd. You know? Yeah, it's, yeah. It's it's one of those like seventies and eighties tropes that we see a lot, where mm-hmm. it's just like very defined two-dimensional characters yep. right like it's just he's the nerdy one mm-hmm. he's the tough she's the slut like mm-hmm. just the standard stereotypes that they stick with the entire time they don't veer from it at all and it doesn't make sense ever because <laughs> the group never like matches it mm-hmm. never goes together like, well, i was yeah, trying to weird. figure out like how these people know each other that's because what I mean. It seems yeah. like they're from completely different. That's what I mean. Social they're, groups. they're these individual <laughs> characters, and they don't veer from it. So it's weird that they're all friends. Yeah, like, but you didn't no think sense. that they um, that they stuck with their stereotypical. I mean, maybe they did. I don't know. I, I thought it was funny when, like, uh, what's his name was it Scuzz or uh, Suicide or whatever is the guy with all the chains on yeah. him, the one whose car they're in. Yeah, yeah. And he's in the graveyard. Like you guys, like don't see me as me. You know, like all this. It's like yeah. so some respect for the dead. Yeah, 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 yeah. 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 It's I, like, I, is I, that against type for that character? Yeah. Are they trying to, you know? I know, it makes no sense. He gave me some uh, Griff vibes. Back yeah. to the future too, Griff. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. yeah. What's that? What's that part that we were laughing at, Holly? Did he say like, "What do you think this is a costume? This is a way of life." Yeah, we're just losing it at that. Like, he speaks in cliches like that all the time. Yeah, he's like so tortured, and he doesn't even know why. Right, right. <laughs> Well, uh, Freddie's girlfriend. Um, uh, I should, yeah, I should I know what it was. Freddie, I think Freddie is the the, the key. To, yeah, oh, he's I the one that he's, keeps the group together. Huh? Because like, there's the nerdy friend that doesn't quite fit in, and yeah. then there's like the girlfriend who's like, like we, you said, Debbie Gibson. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and it doesn't. And none of it really makes sense. I think Freddie is the link between all of them. Yeah, he's the common denominator. Yeah, there, huh? that makes sense because yeah. sometimes there are friend groups like that where like it is one person connecting all the mm-hmm. all the degrees. Yeah, and then you take them out and the whole thing collapses. The yeah. house of cards mm. situation. So, yeah, I yep. think it's Freddie. Yep. Yeah, because they're always like, we got to talk to Freddie. Freddie, you'll know where to party. But Freddie's the only one who's like gone out and got a job. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and he's so a they sell out now. Yeah. yeah, after work. Poor and then Freddie. he's just trying to get his life together. Right. Yeah. I mean, what? He, right. <laughs> got, uh, he's got he's got goals. Mm-hmm. Um, and then we're also introduced to uh, the guy in, in San Diego, the uh, military. Right. Who commander. I forgot about until the mm-hmm. end of the movie. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I know. I know. But like it, it, when when they make that call at the end, you're like, oh, they're going to call like, the guy. Oh, yeah. <laughs> That's right. I forgot about that. The rich guy that has shitty days every day. Yeah. <laughs> oh, my God. That, that might be my... <laughs> My favorite line. <laughs> How's your day, dear? Crap. <laughs> Just like every day. But, yeah, crap as it always is, yeah. And he's been uh he's been he's been waiting for somebody to call and and well he's been tasked with I guess like finding out where these things went mm-hmm. right so he's just been laying in wait every single day. Yeah, but like in a really nice beach house. Yeah. The mm-hmm. tennis court. Yeah. Like how crap can yeah. that be? <laughs> yeah, it's just like it's like at the beginning of pandemic when all the stay at home orders are in place and the celebrities were doing those videos being like, We gotta stay at home, guys. And it's like, shut the fuck up. You're living in a ten thousand square foot mansion. Right? It's not the same. Like, I would stay at your home yeah. forever. Right. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. It's like that. It is like that. <laughs> yeah. it is. I mean, yeah, it's a nice place. Yeah. 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 <laughs> I mean, it's compensation for, I guess he's got the weight of the world on it. If these things ever show up and things go bad, yeah. could be the apocalypse. Yeah, yeah. Like, you're going to live the life, but one day, but, yeah. you're going to get a really hard phone call. <laughs> yep. 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 And that phone call is coming because, of course, these two goofballs go and slap this canister and, of course, the yeah. spray. Even see, that was a joke. You want to see some dead bodies? <laughs> yeah. Well, they're like, wow, oh, they won't leak. They're built by the U.S. Yeah. Army Corps of Engineers. Yep. <laughs> that was funny. They spray out, slap contaminate it. everybody with yep. the gas, and away it goes. 
So and we're off. That's yeah. the cold open. Yeah, <laughs> that was pretty good. It was it a good was a one. Great it's like cold we're gonna open. start a movie. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. And these two, I think, have really good chemistry together. James Karen and Tom Matthews. I think they yeah. do too. The whole time, I'm like, I would work with these guys. I <laughs> liked their story the best. Me too. Like there, that's the journey I was the most invested in. I think. Yeah. And which is weird because that's never what I hear talked about with this movie. No, ever. <laughs> yeah, Linnea Quigley. It's always boobs, about like Linnea over, Quigley. Over, yes. Overwhelm everything, like or a, the Tar Man. The I suppose is the mm-hmm. iconography from it. Um, well, there's um, because I liked. I mean, I don't know. I like the interplay between um, well, that's Bert and Ernie. Do we Bert say yeah. it? That's yep. the name of the. Yeah, yeah. I love that they <laughs> assembled this like. <laughs> old divorced man like Avengers squad to take care of this movie I mean I feel like we don't see very many movies based around like a group of men of this age like this yeah. right yeah. yeah. so it's, it's pretty cool it's it fun. was because it even felt weird watching it tonight I'm like oh you got They're like old. these three guys are like not young guys no. yeah. actors who had been around the block uh, several times and mm-hmm. then did this goofy movie and now it's like the biggest thing that they've done in their career right you know <laughs> Um, but there's also like the younger cast too. So, I mean, it does kind of like balance it out. There's a lot of people in this and they're all split into different groups, I guess, by, uh, force of the plot, you know, as Mm -hmm. it goes. Um, but even the, uh, uh, yeah, Bert and Ernie's interplay. And then it becomes like, uh, Bert and Spider, you know, his thing or Mm -hmm. not Bert and Ernie and Spider, Mm -hmm. you know, or it is Bert and Spider. So, yeah. Yeah. I mean, it, there is like this kind of changing dynamic. Mm -hmm. And I guess the thing that I'm always kind of fascinates me watching it over again is always watching um james karen and tom matthews after the bulk of their dialogue Mm -hmm. has been Mm -hmm. delivered right because they're in like every scene which has to be shit for an actor they're like Mm -hmm. okay the focus of you're not the focus of the scene but you're gonna be here like a lot you don't have any lines and you're just writhing in pain or something you know Mm -hmm. and they have to come up with little bits of business to do Right. In the background, in case you're looking at them. Yeah. <laughs> and so that always kind of amuses me, like what they come up with. <laughs> um, Do you think that Bert and Ernie is a nod to Capra or Henson? No. I thought it was Henson for sure, but... Uh, but now that you say that, yeah, yeah I'm like, I don't know. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Because I, I, I feel like the, cause the colonel, his initials were HG, and I'm like, hmm... Is that a nod to Mr. Walls? Or? Right, right. I feel like huh. there was a lot of those Easter eggs in this. Yeah. And I'm just wondering, I'm like, was it Henson or Capra? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I see what you're doing, but I don't know which one it is. Yeah. Or it could be both. I don't right. know. Right. Well, I did hear, and I don't, I didn't actually hear this in the um, dialogue. Tonight I was, I had looked something up before watching the movie that said, well, because there was Bert and Ernie, mm. then the paramedics are Tom and Jerry. But all I heard oh. was Jerry's name actually mentioned. Yeah. I never heard Tom. Never heard so Tom. Yeah. yeah. But there you go. So that's why it's like okay. must be okay. Henson. Um, I like it. So it's a movie of escalating um, uh, awfulness and pending apocalypse. Right? Yeah. <laughs> but, like, the it's, worst like domino effect situation ever. But it starts in the in the medical facility, their medical uh, supply facility. And I liked what they did in there. This shit was legit hilarious. That was fantastic. And I loved like the little like the like the little half dog. Oh yeah. Yes. <laughs> the half dog is great, but my favorite is when the first a zombie, is that what we're calling them? I don't know. Comes out of yeah. the of the vault that was locked in and they pickaxe its head to the ground. Yeah. But then and the body's still wriggling and it's not dead, and then they cut it off at the neck and now it's free again and running yeah. around. I that I did not it's see that so coming funny. in. Yeah. It was so it's like, fucking funny. It's, like it's slapstick with a zombie. Yeah, yeah. it's funny. Yeah, it, and it like escalated in a way I did not expect it because it just kept getting more and more ridiculous. Yeah, and their reactions are yes. priceless. Oh, the yeah. way they're the way they're interacting with each other. Kings is of physical fantastic. comedy, fantastic. Yeah, but that's it's, it's like it's like Abbott and Costello. Right? Yeah, it's wonderful. See now that you're saying that, I wonder if that was you know because I mean I think this is O'Bannon, right? This is yeah. O'Bannon's sense of oh, humor. 100 percent. Yeah, I, this is why I'm disappointed that the resurrection is or the resurrected is a very serious movie and it's missing that you know. Yeah, like you don't feel that's that it's the same. That's what I said. Alien and Resurrected don't fit with his other stuff. Life Force. Yeah. I yeah. think that is yeah. like his most him movie is Life, <laughs> Life Force. Because there's a lot of naked for no reason in that movie. Oh, too. that's true. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Um, 
But yeah, the the half dog comes to life because everything in the the, pl- the place starts coming to life. Like yeah. even they have like butterflies on the wall, and the butterflies yeah. mm-hmm. start coming to life. Like mm-hmm. just, it was wonderful. I loved that whole. I wanted more in the in the medical place. Yeah, that was my favorite part. Too. Yeah, it was cool. But mm-hmm. I guess it's a surprise because you've seen other zombie movies, and maybe mm-hmm. that's where it's like, okay, it's not going to play by the rules of other zombie movies. I mean, I guess what I mean. Romero created the rules that are even used in The Walking Dead, right? You gotta right. you gotta shoot him in the head, mm-hmm. yeah, to kill him. But O'Bannon's is like, no, you can't that, out yeah. the window, yeah, yeah. And then you know, then I guess right there, you're like, well, how do you kill these things? I mean, this is like, you know, this is a <laughs> horrifying idea. Yes. That and, once it's reanimated, it's yeah. like there really is no good way to yeah. to kill it. And we've discovered that these are actually intellectual. Yeah. Like, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> they, they talk. They and like they learn at a t- terrifying rate. Yeah. Like the way that one picks up on how to use the the medics uh radio. Right? Like that oh, yeah. happened real quick. Like, like, for, and did, more yeah. paramedics. At first yes. it's just brains and then they get more and yeah. more. They can communicate. Yeah. It's terrifying. Send more paramedics. Yeah. yeah. Well, that's so they many can communicate and set like, traps. They know how to set a trap. Yeah. That's horrifying. Well, even the tar man, the, uh, the, the you know, the, the iconic uh, character, I guess, mm-hmm. zombie of this, which is a great oh, makeup. It's, great. it's some so spindly it's actor. So slimy. Yeah. <laughs> so wet. So slimy. It learns how to, I mean, like really fast is like, well, yeah. there's somebody trapped by behind this door i'm just gonna tie a chain around right? and break it open it's like <laughs> yeah so they're smart yeah which doubles the you know they're not just right. you know idiot zombies yeah. running around that not, you can outrun even they, and they're not slow like no, no. <laughs> full great. speed ahead it's great <laughs> they are like the worst nightmare zombie thing and they hide yeah, yeah. they hide yep <laughs> I know the way they use that one paramedic as bait for the other ones i was like oh i hate that i hate that they're working <laughs> oh God, together to right? like hunt like that now yeah the um i don't remember because i've always been curious right i mean even like the simpsons i just remember everything that any kind of zombie um you know pop Mm -hmm. art pop culture thing it's always brains yep i think it comes from this movie i don't think think i can remember anything before this where it was like you know they were they eat your brain right it was always eat your flesh yeah yeah this one it's makes true. it they eat your brain and they're hungry for your brain. Yep. And now every time you hear that, it's from Return of the Living Dead. Yeah, that's true. Um, I also, I remember when I first saw 28 Days Later, mm-hmm. I was like, oh, they run. And then I'm like, well, wait a second. I saw this before in Return yeah. of the Living Dead. Yeah. You know, because that was the big thing that, you know, the, uh, uh, Dawn, Dawn of, the, of the, Dead, the Dead, the remake. Yeah. Because yeah. I, I remember seeing that and I thought that was insanely terrifying that they like speed run, like they're like sprinting yeah mm-hmm. and then i actually saw this after that yeah because i saw that you know when it came out and then i caught up with this when i was in my 20s and i was like wait a second yeah <laughs> you did it first <laughs> well i don't think it w- they did it first because i think around that time i was like well who actually did i mm-hmm. think there's an italian uh oh, sure there yeah is. there's an italian zombie movie whose name escapes me because there's like 500 yeah. of them that had running zombies in it in the early 80s. Mm-hmm. So this is at that least the second one. Yeah. And probably the more popular mm-hmm. one, mm-hmm. Return of the Living Dead. Um so the the yeah, so the punks go off to hang out in the graveyard. Mm-hmm. Um this uh headless corpse now cuz they saw right. its head off, right? They saw like, its head off. It's just so funny. And they got to get Bert involved and he's like, "Well, what we're going to do we're going to hack it into pieces and then we're going to take it over to yeah. the crematorium." He's like, "Ernie might still be working." Yeah. But the but <laughs> But the arms and hands and everything are still grabbing and flailing around while yeah. they're cutting them off. And then when they go to the crematorium and they have to prove to him that like this is actually happening, <laughs> it rips his velour tracksuit. <laughs> I just love because again, it's very like Abbott and Costello or yeah. like Three Stooges. Or they like come in, they're like, "We got a problem. I want you to take care of it." What is it? Uh, rabid weasels. Like it's just so like slapstick funny. Right. I mm. love it. Mm-hmm. And he's like, well, well, that's cruel. You can't burn animals. Mm-hmm. And like, well, I promise you won't say anything, Ernie. Mm-hmm. Right. <laughs> like, it's just, it's just like classic comedy to me, and I love it. Yeah, the guys, their personalities are like, I mean, these are like characters. Like, yeah. you know, it feels like they're, yeah. I don't know about real people. They're slapstick, you know, kind of. They're all uh, committed to this. Though. Yeah, like yeah. I didn't need the street 
the street used for this movie. Yeah, that's kind of how I feel I just too, needed yeah. these older guys. Yeah. <laughs> they were my favorite part. Yeah, I guess maybe running time or whatever. Because I guess that's what I was thinking this time around. I'm like, yeah. why did they, you know, why is there like this side story involving, or a parallel story involving the street kids? Is right. it to give more victims? Uh, to just increase the scope of it? Is it to appeal to a younger target demo? I mean, it could be all of those things. I think he works with, I mean, yeah. as a writer, he works with it, you know, yeah. very well. I mean, I like, like they did to me, like get, you know, individualized personalities. Um, but yeah, it's just kind of interesting to merge those two, you know, like different mm-hmm. uh, age groups together mm-hmm. just to see, I guess, maybe what the results uh, are. Um Ernie has all of these, even though it's not spoken, but there's a lot of like visual cues that say like he's a Nazi. He has, uh, he's listening to German, uh, like the Panzer, uh, you know, like mm-hmm. theme. Um, he has a Walter, Walter PPK. Yes, he, he does. later has like the, the overcoat. <laughs> it's like what the, and mm-hmm. I guess Ernie Calton Bruner, Ernest Calton Bruner was like an actual Nazi. Yeah. I think he it's had a, like, very bleached hair. Yeah. Yeah. I think it's a joke because he's the guy who runs the crematorium. Yeah. Yeah. That's that was the I think that's the, <laughs> the guy who runs the crematorium is a Nazi. Yeah. Um yeah, uh, so I don't want to think that because right. I like Ernie. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Ernie's really nice and I don't want to believe that. Yeah. Um, so he does end up like burning the, uh, the body parts yep. and this, Which of course, I thought was so funny. Cause the whole time Bert's asking all these questions, like, like he's, he doesn't know how bodies are cremated. Like he's asking, all these right. questions, I want everything burned. Like, like at the bones. And he's like, yeah, it'll, it'll burn the bones. Works. He's yeah. like, like, have you, do you not understand how things are cremated? Right. Like, you know does how, does you know he think works? you get like a bag of dust and a pile of bones? Right. <laughs> like they bag up the bones <laughs> for you too. Right. <laughs> <laughs> We want it all gone. Yeah. It's like, yeah, that's typically how it works, Bert. Right. <laughs> I like that little setup where there's like a, a side. James Karen is like some big favor. I could operate that thing. And then later he does. Mm. Yeah, yeah, that's true. Yeah, so. he does. <laughs> there's well, a lot. There's a lot of callbacks in this movie. Yeah, because yeah. he did that with Linnea Quigley yeah. during her. You know, it's like the worst thing that you, you think thought about, about death. dying. Yeah. <laughs> I fucking Just hated unprompted, that. Scene. Unprompted, unprompted <laughs> out of nowhere. Yeah. yeah, but that was to set up her death scene. Her scene, it, right? Yeah. Like yeah. The worst been, thing for me would be to super be surrounded by a bunch. She was of having old a conversation men. with herself. Nobody was talking to her. Yeah. Like it. She's a performance. It artist. feels very stilted. I appreciated it. Of course you did. Yeah, she was naked. Um, well, her friends kind of appreciate it. She does this all the time, apparently. Well, just, uh, yeah. yeah. Why? 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 Okay. They did and they didn't because uh, what's his name? Uh, the chain guy. Yeah. Show some respect. He was, he was very much like, get off me. Show yeah. some respect. This is yeah. as she's like grabbing his crotch. Yeah. Or he's like, what's wrong with you, man? Yeah. Uh, I thought that was funny. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Show some respect for the dead. <laughs> He, uh, or sorry, the, uh, so that, but that's happening about the same time that the, the, the body parts are being burned. And so then he releases the gas into the atmosphere. Yes. <laughs> and now the whole town's infected, which it causes rains. acid rain of yeah. death. I think yep. it's like specifically on the cemetery, like just overhead, mm-hmm. be, at least at this point. Yeah. Um, but this has some great imagery like this is one of the super cool yeah like the horror movie graveyard yeah Yeah. it's like a classic iconic yeah halloween graveyard and i love the skeleton hands punching through the earth it's awesome it's wonderful yes it's It's that perfect like thunderstorm going on too at the same time i love like the the shot like of the view of it sleeping down through the mud yeah it's like a cross section of earth yes i love that and into the the cask. Yes, <laughs> under the shoes. Yeah, because I mean, it's how wonderful. many? You know, when you think about it, because uh, I don't remember there was at some point. I'm like, yeah, the image of a zombie crawling out of a, a grave is like a classic horror movie image, or at least the oh, hand yeah. coming out of it. Yeah, but it, like they, you you actually think you like you haven't actually seen that that much. I don't think, or at least I hadn't. But I'm like, Return of the Living Dead is like full of it. Like they're mm-hmm. trying to maybe like thriller. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Uh, stuff like that. But there's not in zombie movies a lot of like actually burrowing up through. Because I guess, you know, it doesn't make any realistically. It's stupid. But it, it's cool in this because it's like the uh, old tales from the crypt or something mm-hmm. like that. You know, uh, zombies burrowing up through the earth. And then suddenly you got a graveyard full of zombies. 
This is where it starts to escalate. Because mm-hmm. Bert and the crew think that they've contained it, the movie's over. But then they have another problem on their hand. Yeah, the two men are turning. Frankie and... Um, what's his name? That was Frank and... Uh, Freddy. Uh, Freddy. 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 Yeah. Frank and Freddy, that's it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And the way they're turning... It's uh, how is it revealed? You know, because I right, mean, so, yeah. At, at first, they just think that they're sick, mm-hmm. and they end up calling the EMTs, saying like, "We have two men that have been poisoned." They show up. <laughs> the, the EMTs show up, and they don't get a pulse. They don't get blood pressure. Temperatures like seventy degrees. Mm-hmm. And instead of immediately trying to take him to the hospital, they're like explaining. They're like, like "Yeah, you." It looks like you're dead. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it's basically where we're at. Um, don't really know what to do about yeah. that, but uh, I think you're dead. <laughs> yeah. I mean, what and he's like, they're like yeah. well, obviously you're not. You're talking and whatnot, but it, you should be. Yeah. yeah. You're like, like conscious, but you're dead. Like, yeah. Why are you just taking them to the hospital? <laughs> I love the, the the all the physical comedy that yeah, those guys yeah, are doing. Yeah, they're great. You know, um, the, the EMTs like switch spots. Yeah, and, like mm-hmm. take the vitals of each other. Yes. person. just to be like, well, wait, yeah, did you did you get that? Yeah, too? yeah, yeah. Like yeah. I'm gonna try this when you try that. Did you notice the <laughs> one guy? It was real quick. He like shakes out his stethoscope like before he does it the second time. Like, yeah, is this thing working? You know, yeah, yeah. they're like bits. blowing on it. Yeah, on it. yeah. I wonder if I'm noticing like all these little bits because of the way the movie it, it is shot. You know, because it's like an ensemble. There's generally like four or five people in the frame at any yeah. right. time. And that doesn't that feel weird? Because I feel like we don't see that a ton now. Like if I feel like I don't see movies like that anymore. Yeah, and so if I, it's yeah. and if it's like that, it's intentional and supposed to be like an epic shot. Yeah, 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 yeah exactly. Of like a ensemble, you know, cast right. like an Avenger movie or something. Yeah, it's not just like a conversation between right. four old men. Like you yeah. know, it's just like a group of people. Yeah, it's maybe like play like. Yes, it I is. Think. I was gonna say it's very yeah. stage like. It's dude, it's you very... could totally make this a stage play. You really could. So, yeah. it, it'd be super there's, easy. It basically, is one. Yeah, there's very few locations, mm-hmm. very few sets. Like it, it's. It has dance numbers. <laughs> <laughs> Why isn't this a musical? Yeah, I would go see yeah, this musical. Where is the return of has the it been done as a musical? musical? Yeah, this is where we find out it probably has. I mean, this movie does have like a huge cult it following. It does. It has a yeah. great poster, too. Yeah. We're and, looking at it down here. Oh, yeah. But yeah. It yeah. Has a great poster. I've got that one on my wall. Mm-hmm. But yeah, because yeah, the it, skeleton with eyes, which. Yeah, yep. and like the I dog collar Skeletons or whatever. It has like that kind of. So it's saying it's like a punk movie, right? right. I mean, the guy's spray painting the uh, logo on the on the tombstone. Right. And it also, the poster, um, well, they're back from the grave and ready to party is the tagline. Oh, but it great. also has like a big featured area for the music. Right. Um, and to be honest, in the 80s, I had never heard of any of these bands. I love the Cramps. Yeah. Okay. So the Cramps and is making, probably. They're making a comeback right now because of Wednesday. Oh, okay. Wednesday. That song that she dances to in the uh, show. Uh, That's yeah. a Cramps song. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I yeah. mean, so they're like a, a proto goth. What would you call the Cramps um, type of music? Yeah. You're going to you're gonna link them in with like the Misfits. Like, there you go. Yeah. 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 Because yeah. isn't um, Lux Anterior? Is he one of the anyway? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> so um, yeah, because there was a lot of actually there was some controversy about the music. I remember uh, seeing that for uh, the 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 LP, the thirty three, mm-hmm. and thinking this is like you know again I hadn't seen the movie yet. I'm a little kid and I'm seeing the album and I'm like I got to see this movie and mm-hmm. you know and because uh, I'd heard I think Party Time uh, was played in the trailer, so I, I knew that song was in the movie. Um, but Dan O'Bannon apparently hated that they went and put the pop songs in his movie. What? So this was not his. This was forced on the movie by whatever, whatever. Enigma it's Records. It's like another character in this movie. Yeah. It's, 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 I feel like I it's feel, pretty essential. I feel like it matches what the Tony was going for. Yeah. Yeah. And I don't know. I'm biased because, you know, the first way I saw it, it had it in it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But when the DVD, I remember waiting, like, when's Return of the Living Dead coming out on DVD? When's mm-hmm. it coming out on DVD? And then it finally came out, and it had Dan O'Bannon's official seal of approval on it. Mm-hmm. And so he went in and did what he wanted to do with the music. And so some of it he turned way down, you mm-hmm. know. Uh, some of the songs he got rid of. Mm-hmm. And I think there were some other songs that had to be replaced because of rights. So 
that DVD version of Return of the Living Dead does not have like that's not the way that I remember seeing it. But this new newer the Shout Factory mm-hmm. version actually does have the theatrical or awesome. at least the original yeah. home video uh, audio track. Mm-hmm. On. Important that is because important. we got to have our SSQ and our cramps. And yeah, our, I love the cramps. They're great. Yeah. SSQ. It's, anybody it's remember really Stacy Q? Yes. Yes. So she's actually that was her uh, band before she. So she was in like a goth <laughs> pop band okay. nice. before she went off and became Stacy Q. Okay. So that's her doing the tonight we make love till we die trashes theme oh. from Return of the Living Dead. Yeah. Okay. That um. Sense. So we got zombies. There's zombies. Well, no, these guys are dying. They they have rigor right. mortis. Yes. <laughs> yes. Which is like so really funny. funny. It is funny. It's it's very surprising. Mm-hmm. You the know? blood pooling on the back was cool yeah, too. They're yeah. They're like, because it's like a funny movie, but mm-hmm. then they're like writhing in pain. It's like, oh yeah. Jesus! Yeah, and you hear like his bones like cracking, cracking as as they move him. They're it's screaming, disturbing. Like, yeah, but great. Um, the zombies end up uh, chasing all the uh, kids around, and eventually everybody gets separated in different buildings. Mm-hmm. Um, then I think like once yeah. all Linnea our- quickly meets her meets her death the same way she said she didn't want to. Yep. So mm-hmm. she becomes a naked ghoul chasing people around the cemetery, all she blue does. and naked like. And and really, she does. Really grody face. Makeup effects. What are we thinking? It, they were grosser than I thought they were going to be. Yeah. They were pretty wet and sticky most of the time. They're, gro- they're good. They're gross and they match the movie. Yeah. Like it- Surprise there's no disembowelings. I mean, there movie? was a big bite into a skull a couple of times. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Hollowing out a skull. Yeah. The gross one was to me the 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 guy who send more paramedics before he hears the call on the radio. Yeah, he's like, he takes the bite. He's yeah. chewing. Yeah. He's yeah, eating out of this guy's head. Yeah, that one was nasty. Yeah, <laughs> that's funny. Like send more food. <laughs> yeah. I guess the story is on this movie that the original um, makeup effects guy was a guy named William Munns, I believe, and he was fired. Uh, Dan O'Bannon apparently also not the easiest person to get her along with. You don't say because yeah. uh, I see he seems to have a problem with every step of this process. Yeah, so yeah far, weird. So. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I think the guy suffered from Crohn's disease. That's pretty um, a miserable. Oh, that'll disease. make you yeah. grumpy. Yep. Yeah, yep. that'll make you grumpy. Yeah, I think, and then he died because, like, later in life, whenever you'd see him, he always had like a bow tie. That was his signature thing. He always mm. had a red bow tie okay. on, yeah. and he was just this kind of looked like this elder, elderly, very frail. Uh, man, which was different than when you see him in Dark Star or anything, you know, mm-hmm. um, when he was younger. But I also heard that he was kind of strange and had like metal put in the walls of his house. Oh, so no. The, I mean, the radio waves. I would couldn't... like to say that anything you're saying is surprising. Yeah, yeah, I don't yeah, know if yeah, that's yeah. true. Uh, so, yeah. yeah. Um, but like you're talking about the effects of this movie, like it is silly. Like you can see strings on skeletons. Yeah. Right. Like it's just it's silly and it's cute. But mm-hmm. it's also gross. Yeah. <laughs> you know? Yeah. Well, I think like some of the, like the, um, the, I guess when I, what I'm impressed with is the tar man. Like, oh, yeah. He looks great. Um, I think the, you know, like even the headless corpse, uh, or whatever, not the headless, sorry, the, uh, the trunkless, uh, lady zombie. Yeah. That's that they, on the, t- <laughs> that they roped down to the table. Yeah. And she's like talking. Yeah. Although I think she was created by the second guy. So they brought in uh, Tony Gardner mm-hmm. to replace Bill Munn. Because I think the original, um, like the yellow cadaver, mm-hmm. like even when you're watching that, it's like he, he, it doesn't, when he gets his head taken off, that looks. Uh, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and, this, and when they're like chasing him around the, the facility, you can see like the, the suit like wrinkling. Yeah, 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 you can. Yeah. You can tell it's like, yeah, yeah, just like a latex suit or something. And know? I think they did like a cut in or two of the, the refreshed one. Yeah. You know? They uh, did. And then they try to obscure as much as they can mm-hmm. of the effect. But it seems so funny. It doesn't matter. It's yeah. so funny. Yeah. Yeah. I think it works. That's what I say. Like, like, the, like you can see the strings, you see the latex, but like it's so it's kind of charming. Yeah, yeah, it's so charming. It's yeah. so funny. Like I don't care. <laughs> I was kind of disappointed. That a lot of the zombies like had a lot of muck in their hair, but you could see their faces were just like normal people faces. Yeah, yeah. And like, I mean, I know this is something silly, but I always, 
I don't know. Like one of them was wearing like a Civil War jacket, but he was like not even remotely rotted. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah. Like, <laughs> come on, dude. <laughs> make some effort. Yeah. If you're gonna put him in a Civil War thing, like it, make it like a centerpiece of your skeleton. movie. Yeah. yeah. Like make it cool. You know. Right. I guess because it takes place in Louisville, Kentucky, right? There is yeah, like, he's wearing a, like a Confederate jacket. Yeah, yeah. and there's a Civil War cannon, I think, in the middle of the mm-hmm. the Resurrection Cemetery. Another. Joke. Yeah. Yeah. Um. You're going to set up that joke. Go for it. I'm trying to remember. One of the things I noticed like a while ago is one of the, the signs in Bert's office. It's it's like an eye chart. Where it's, oh, it's yeah. Like Bert is a slave driver and yes. a cheap son of a bitch. Uh, <laughs> like, like, That's so So funny. then you start reading like all the shit in the mm-hmm. background. Yep. Because when I first saw it, I was like, why the hell is there like a handwritten like eye chart there? And, yeah. And then I started reading. I'm like, oh. <laughs> Sight gags galore yeah. in, in Return of Living. I mean, this is I, which makes this movie kind of special. There's like just a lot of stuff going on in like uh, every frame, it seems like. Mm-hmm. Um, but eventually, yeah, the zombies do overrun all the paramedics uh, and cops. Send mm-hmm. more cops. That's the Civil War guy. <laughs> yeah. Right? yeah, it is. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> as they come in, they're just swarmed. Um, gives a nice sense of, uh, you know, like there's a lot of zombies, even though in some shots eh, it's like a crowd. Yeah. But you get the impression that there's a lot it's more enough. Than that. Yeah, it's it's enough. You get some decent like wide shots of a big crowd running at people. Like mm-hmm. it works. Yeah. Um Freddie and Frank. Yeah, they start to they start to lose it and then they decide that it might be a good idea to lock them up in a different room with Debbie Gibson. Yeah. <laughs> Who decides to stay with Freddie? Mm-hmm. You know? And it's like, well, that's a bad idea. But I mean, I I get the impression they were like so cr- rushed for time. I mean, zombies are literally breaking down the doors. Right. Tearing people apart. Yes. Um, or at least biting into their brains and all this other stuff. What do we find out from the one that they capture, the uh, the torso, torso zombie mm. that they strapped to the gurney? I didn't like this scene. No? Why not? It made me uncomfortable. I didn't like the way that thing was flopping around on the table. Oh, it's spinal cord? Yeah, it was gross. And you it, see was it was fluid leaking? coming. Yeah, yeah fluid. That, made, that was too far. That was a bridge too far. And I didn't like the voice that was coming out of this thing either. The yeah. whole thing, and it was like under these bright, sterile fluorescent lights. It was just, mm-hmm. the whole scene was off-putting. It's very to me. uncomfortable. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> but they eat because they're in pain. Yeah, that's what I gathered. Yeah, it was, was already like, gross. Why is this necessary? It was already though? gross. And then she's like, we're in pain because we can feel we're dead. And I was yeah. like, oh, Jesus. Okay. I feel myself right. No. Yeah, no. Why, why do we need this scene in I the movie? I don't need oh, that. It was great. When have you ever heard what it feels <laughs> like, like to be why, a zombie? Why does it matter? I think it it doesn't kind of, it doesn't give us their like undoing. You know, it's not the key to no. you know, defeating them or anything. You're no. right. Because uh, yeah. Ernie's trying to get some Story kind of insight into like what. Well, like, why do you eat? I guess maybe that's it. It's like, mm-hmm. why do zombies always eat people? Mm-hmm. Yeah. And this movie actually answers yeah. it. They eat the brains because it stops the hurting. Yep. From the pain of being dead. Yeah. <laughs> <Yes>. Jesus. <laughs> it hurts to be dead. That's it, it, which a- sucks, though, because we're meant to believe that's not true. Yeah. yeah. Like, we live in a society where it's like <laughs> death is like the release from pain. And it's yeah. Like, well, well this at least is... you're not conscious. That's the difference. Yeah. It, would, it would suck to be conscious in a dead body. Apparently, like, I heard. Yeah. yeah. That's that's what we have to take from this. Being a zombie is painful. <laughs> yes. Not death. Yes, Being a zombie. Yeah, that's that's what I'm telling myself. All right. That's but what somehow we're taking from only that. eating a brain can relieve that. Uh, it's How? like a drug. The brains yeah. have CBD properties. Yeah. Yeah. There you go. Yeah. To yeah. zombies. Yeah. Um, yeah, there you go. That that is a good question. I'm gonna get hung up on that. Okay, so yeah. um, so uh, now we're down to. I mean, the, the cast has been thinned down. Mm-hmm. Uh, you still have. Um, I think all that's left is. Uh, um, er, oh, sorry, yeah, Ernie and mm-hmm. Sheila. Is it Sheila? I don't fucking know. Mm, I have no idea. Uh, I her name right because she does eventually when when Tom Matthews does freak out. He's like a dangerous zombie. Mm-hmm. Yeah, we're just calling her Debbie Gibson. Okay, so yeah. Debbie Gibson is uh is still alive. Yeah. Um, Ernie gets his foot broke. They're gonna try and go for the cars. Cars explode. There is like a little chase scene where they get the 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 police force has set up a barrier, mm-hmm. but the zombies overrun the barrier. Mm-hmm. All mm-hmm. hell's breaking loose. 
Yeah, and there's the, those two kids have made it back to the medical supply place, which, again, like, I don't give a shit about these kids. What, so. the unrequited love? Was it? Not really. I don't know. I it don't was know. a joke. The one dude, yeah. he just wants to have sex with her. She's like, I don't have anything to do with you. But in the end, it's like, I've always hated you. But hold me. Yep. <laughs> yeah. Uh, don't care about that. No, I'm not invested in the story at all. Uh, uh, um, and I'm then, still mad at them because nobody gave Linnea Quigley a jacket. When it's oh, down when there was acid rain. rain. Acid rain. She's yeah. Butt ass naked, and everyone's wearing a jacket, and nobody gave her something to and wear. And then they get in the car, and she's in the backseat of convertible, and the convertible roof collapses yeah. on her. <laughs> and still, no, no like, one is helping. It's the 80s, so of course you're all wearing like 3,000 articles of clothing. Yes. Give her something. You got, take one of your three jackets off yeah, and give it to seriously. her. Well, the, what, the one girl, uh, she, well, it didn't give it to her, but yeah. I think she. she but did even though it was something. like, it was like a vest. Yeah. It always seemed like because there was a lot of them running around, like, and they quickly at one point had some something wrapped around her midsection then that got stuck at one on point, a, she yeah when they are in the medical facility place yeah. she grabs a sheet yeah and mm-hmm. wraps it around herself but then it gets stuck on a banister as she's running up the yeah stairs. they're yeah. always running but i love yeah. the way that the, the i guess all those things seem like was that an accident you know it's like did that happen on purpose because it's not like drawing attention to because i guess you're watching so many people mm-hmm. it seems like like four or five people run through and one of them mm-hmm. you know her mm-hmm. Her sheet gets stuck on or whatever. Um, so I wonder, it's like, did you shoot sequentially? And you're just like, God, we're poor, going with it, you know? Poor girl. I didn't make it so much. <laughs> and it's, and like in rain, like movie mm-hmm. rain, you know, it's cold and mm-hmm. miserable. Yeah. Oh. I, anytime I, any actor has to film a rain scene, I feel so bad for them. But yeah, leg warmers. That's yeah. all they gave her. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But in this movie, I mean, I guess it was worth it because she had like a career. I mean, she was in stuff before this. Um, mm-hmm. you know, I mean, I remember, um, graduation day or, you mm-hmm. know, some slasher movies. Usually she was always the girl who would take her top off or get naked in something. Yep. Um, but then after this, I mean, that was like pretty much exclusively, I think what she did. Yep. <laughs> um, and then used it to her advantage became like one of the, you know, mm-hmm. modern era scream queens. And yep. a bunch of low budget movies like Slime, uh, what was it? Sorority, Sorority Babes. Sorority Babes at the Slime Ball, <laughs> slime ball, ball, ball Rama. Rama. Yeah, has that ever been done on this podcast? Uh, yeah. Oh, well, like we? way back in the day? I've seen it several times. I'm oh, wondering okay. if the first time I saw it was on the show. I'm not sure. Right, we'll have to check the back catalog. But she even does all that direct to DVD horror stuff now. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. Her, she's she's still got working. so she's many working, credits. Yeah. It's insane. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it, probably mm. because of the. I remember she was uh, she was the boobs in Freddy's chest in Nightmare on Elm Street Four because mm-hmm. I think yep. she was um, dating Brandy the makeup Harlan? guy on that. No, oh. it was Show, It was Mark Showstrom. Oh yeah, yeah. I think they talked about that in the documentary, the Nightmare yeah. on Elm Street documentary. Because he met her. I remember mm-hmm. the story was he met her by casting her breasts for Night of the Demons. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Because that great scene where she buries the, <laughs> the, yeah, lipstick. the lipstick. Yep. Previous yeah. episode. <laughs> yep. that, I mean, we talked about that on that yeah. episode, but that scene scarred me. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, yeah, you can't unsee <laughs> that once you've seen it. Yeah. Her boobs really paid for themselves. Uh-huh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They really yeah. did. Yeah. 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 Paid off for good old Linnea. Yeah. Good for her. She's, um, she does a lot of conventions. Yeah. I've seen her several times. She's always around. Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. For the mm-hmm. subject of documentaries and mm-hmm. all sorts of stuff. This movie also has a documentary. I think it's called More Brains, the, nice. the making of Return Love of the Living it. Dead or something like that. Mm-hmm. Um, there's a book, there's a hardcover mm-hmm. book about the making of Return mm-hmm. of the Living Dead. Do you have it? I do not. Mm. All right. I know. Colin's wish hey. list. Yeah. Uh, there you go. you would. <laughs> um, so uh, eventually mm-hmm. they uh, we get to pretty dire. I like that uh, Spider, you know, uh, uh, the Miguel Nunez character, like he basically takes over as action guy once like, you know, Ernie... Uh, Freddie, you know, those guys are kind of out of the picture. Yeah. Um, Because he seems like he could be capable of like, okay, let's get the hell out of here. <laughs> kind of, yeah. you know, like, okay, him and Bert can save the day. He's a, he's take charge kind of guy. Yeah. yeah. But unfortunately, that doesn't happen. They no. end up back at the medical facility because they're, they're blocked out they by all the zombies. finally call that number on the side of the barrel. Yeah. Which hooks them up with crappy day guy. <laughs> Yeah, the, the the military dude from the beginning of the yeah, movie yeah, that we, we forgot, all, forgot all about. about. Yeah. <laughs> and so there's a con- contingency plan mm-hmm. in place. Now I, I like this scene a lot because he's just like calmly asking questions and taking notes, and he's just like, "Well, when did the, what happened next? Oh, really? 
well, how did that affect it? And like, it was just yeah. so calm. And what did they do? Yeah. What did they do? Yeah. <laughs> it's so calm. He's like, okay, okay, well, I'm going to reconnect you and uh, I'm going to fucking call in a bomb. Like, yeah. it's, I, I like it. I like that he calls in the president. The president doesn't know where Louisville is. You catch that? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> they resurfaced in Louisville, Kentucky, sir. <laughs> uh, and yeah, so that, yeah, that's their, their solution is to call in the nuke strike. Um, but before that, um, the creepy th- thing for me was Freddie trying to get to, so Ernie takes, uh, Tina, yeah. that's her name mm-hmm. up in the crawl space and lock themselves in. Cause he's got the broken foot and they can't mm-hmm. run. And you know, Freddie's down there like Tina, I just want to eat your brain. Mm-hmm. You know, I really hurt myself this time, Tina. Mm-hmm. I broke my hand completely. Off. <laughs> <laughs> um, and the last shot is like, yeah, it's like Ernie's up there and he's going to shoot her. Right. Like, this yeah. is the, like, you know, this is the mercy killing. Right. I guess. Yeah. This poor girl's freaking out. Her dead boyfriend's going to come up through the door. Yeah. See, I like Ernie. I don't want to think he's a Nazi. Right. I yeah. Like yeah. Him. yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and, uh, and then you do actually see, I guess, um, the door flops open and he comes up and there's just that like long, that teen, uh, mm-hmm. <laughs> creepy. With the, yeah. Then the bomb goes off and destroys everything. But is the movie over? Well, no. The atomic bomb, sorry. It's a roasted 14 square blocks. Yeah, don't, yeah it's pretty great. <laughs> <laughs> I kind of wish they would just cut the credits right then, though. Just. Bomb goes off, we're done. It does kind of feel like yeah. the ending is manufactured, mm-hmm. right? It oh, yeah. feels to me like that's as far as they went in the scripting. And then the like, bomb goes off. And like, and, no, add add another little bit so we can make a sequel. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It does feel like that because there's no new footage. There is no. voiceover from the army guy, the general. Yeah. Oh, don't worry. It, it, I think the rain will clear it up. Yeah, Mm -hmm. and so we see a bunch of reused footage of um, the rain coming down and seeping through the earth, and then the skeleton coming back up and party time. Um, This movie was popular enough to spawn a bunch of sequels. How Um, many? You know, I'm going to say five, and I'm not sure if that's true, but okay, so let me try and get this. So there is uh, Return of the Living Dead Part 2, Stars... Uh, James Karen and Tom Matthews as different characters. <laughs> okay, and like I think that. the uh, the, the, okay with that. the canisters fall off the back of a truck as they're being transported in another town, and all the shit goes on. Or they, they like in the mob, it fell off the back of a truck. Yeah. Like, kind yeah. of thing that'd be funny. I'm okay with that. <laughs> I remember seeing it when I was younger, and I disliked it. I haven't seen it since then, so I don't know how it would hold up. My as, so my impression was, was like, it wasn't up, good. Colin might like it. Maybe I, if Sean was here, he would say, "Ooh, we should be watching this we one." We should instead. be watching yeah. the sequel. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, yeah. it just so happens that Sean brought our first exposure, to Return of Living Dead, to the show, and that was Return of Living Dead three. We did on this show, okay, and that was uh, Brian Yuzna. I think the director of Bride of Reanimator. And uh, didn't he have something with Society? He was yep, involved he did in Society. society. Yep. Mm-hmm. He directed that one. And that was, uh, I think people remember that movie because that's the one with the girl with the body mod- uh, piercing modification. Yeah. She dies because she gets exposed to the stuff. And so she has to keep on poking glass and all this shit through her skin. Oh. And so she's kind of this sexy, pierced, you know, girl. I did not the- care for that one. Not I my- have not seen that. Not my jam. for that. So maybe there's only four, because I know there's Return of Living Dead, Rave to the Grave, and there's Return of that's Living great. Dead, Necropolis. <laughs> oh, that's not as good. No. Which I think were shot in Bulgaria or Russia no, or somewhere in, in the Eastern Bloc. That's and, right. <laughs> and went direct to video. And I Rave don't know grave. off the top of my head if there has been another one. So there's at least four Return of Living Dead movies. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Wow. Yeah. I had no idea. I know. It was a thing. Well, I mean, it was popular. It's uh, every Halloween. I think about bringing it to the show. So finally, now I got to check it off. It's like seriously, every every Halloween, yeah. it's like, is that the movie I'm doing this year? It has good mm-hmm. Halloween atmosphere. Yeah, it really spooky yeah. atmosphere. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, it really does. All right. Well, I'll tell you what. We're going to go around the table and tell you whether or not you should watch Return of the Living Dead. This will be kind of interesting because we've got somebody who basically saw it for the first time tonight, yep. somebody who hasn't seen it in a very long time, mm-hmm. somebody who's seen it way too many times <laughs> in their life. Uh, but first, we're going to answer some of your mail. And in order to do that, we're going to have to summon your mailman or our mailman. And his name is Igor. Bring us the mail. 
Masters! Masters, the mail! I've got the mail. So many letters. Our followers are rising. Rising. Why, thank you, Igor. I wonder what would happen if he got hit by that acid rain. Hey, my turn him normal. Yeah. It would cancel out. It would cancel out whatever's yeah. going on inside of him. Yeah. yeah, probably. Maybe we need maybe yeah. this is the sequel we should have is right? fixes it. Yeah. Reverse zombie. Yeah. This would be the one we should have recorded, like him just coming brains, yeah. brains, you know. Uh I think there's a commentary track on the DVD that might be by the zombies and I never listened to it because for some reason I was thinking it was just gonna be a bunch of hurr, Yeah, hurr, probably. But no, they talk. They talk. Yeah. So yeah. it might have been I should watch that. Yeah. You should watch it. Yeah. That sounds funny. Okay. Uh, Well, we should remind people how they can participate in this interactive portion of our show by following along on Facebook. Facebook.com slash Saturday Night Freak Show. On Twitter. At Sat Freak Show. Uh, By email. Saturday Night Freak Show Yahoo.com. Or on Instagram at Saturday Night Freak Show. About tonight's movie, Return of the the Return of the Living Mm. Dead. Let's get our articles in there. Let's get it right. Mm -hmm. Uh, Morris says, to me, Return of the Living Dead is the best zombie movie ever made next to Night of the Living Dead 1990. With the doomed ending, outrageous comedy, truly scary zombie siege narrative, creative zombies talking and design-wise interesting looking, and the rocking soundtrack with the cramps, Return of the Living Dead is a true classic, and without it, alongside American Werewolf, you don't get the Scream franchise, Get Out, or Barbarian that brought comedy horror to the forefront in modern times. Mm-hmm. That's yeah. That's a bold mm-hmm. statement. I mean, this one, this one does a really good job of balancing the comedy and horror. Yeah. It's, it really It's does. a good balancing act, you know? Yeah. yeah. Well, we'd had Evil Dead. Uh, yeah, well, no, that's Evil true. Dead 2 wasn't out by this point. Right. And Evil Dead isn't really that The funny. second one is the funny one. Yeah. 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 And Friday the first 13th. one has uh, some moments, but it's... Yeah. Shut up, Linda. Da- yeah. Mostly that. Yeah. <laughs> that's yeah. basically it, but it's much yeah. darker. And Friday the 13th Part 6 wasn't until the year after right. this. So, yeah. yeah. Tom um, Matthews is on a hot streak here. I know. Huh? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, Jimbo Ice says it's the funniest, scariest, meanest, crustiest American zombie movie. It's a perfect mix of madness tied together with a comprehensible meta plot. I love it, and I can't wait to hear your breakdown. There is a crust. It's I was going to say slime. crust. Crusty is a good word. There is a crust, but I'd mm-hmm. say slime more. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Travis Legler says this is the perfect party movie. You get a group of friends together, laugh, scream, and keep saying, what the fuck? Granted, with a movie like Jaws the Revenge, you make that party movie fun by making up drinking games to enjoy it. (laughs) However, this movie is a blast out of pure entertainment. This movie is peak 80s craziness, a very good choice, and I'm very pumped to hear what you all think. Yeah. Michael Whitaker says it's quite literally my favorite zombie movie, perhaps even one of the very first horror movies I saw with my best friend. It's also a regular Halloween and 4th of July viewing for me. I have always struggled with the idea that Ernie is, in fact, my favorite character. I'm aware they were intending to make him an ex-Nazi. Yeah. I contend that it never it's never expressly said on screen. So then you can't really say he's a Nazi. He and Spider prove themselves to be the most capable characters in a zombie crisis. That's the logic I'm going with. I mean, it can't be yeah. an ex-zombie. He's not old enough. Right? Yeah. Or ex not Yeah. Can't be old enough. Uh, last week, we watched a movie what called... What year was this? 85. <laughs> oh, he's like... Mm. That's 50 years. He's not... He couldn't have... He would have been a, like a child in Germany. Okay, well, anyway. A ch- uh, child Nazi. <laughs> we're getting hung up on a part of the... I swear to God, yeah, it's there way only between because the, the joke is that he's the guy who runs... Yeah. Or the crematory. Yeah, no, I get it, but I just, <laughs> I refuse it. Yeah. I refuse um, it. <laughs> Barbarian was the movie we watched last week. Weird Rabbit says, Barbarian reminds me of the joke that every Hallmark rom-com is just one yes and away from being a horror movie. Yes. Yeah. And that's so is. true. It really is. And uh, he says, I say, you'd have to listen to that show, but as for Sean needing to see what's in the God. house he just might not have a good horror movie self-preservation skills i got tricked into going on the ba- on the bayou for a short film once in the entire weekend i was like and this is where the one black guy dies in the movie it, yeah I'm, so i'm just as bad in the bayou <laughs> yeah especially yeah don't ever go on we talked about this before don't go on a boat with people you don't know very well nope never nope. No. don't go on a boat with one other person either <laughs> no, you, got, you gotta have like a crowd and you gotta know them real well there yeah so that's true yeah don't uh, be outnumbered don't be outnumbered on a boat no don't be outnumbered on a boat no how can you outnumber other people on a boat 
I mean, okay, well, uh, <laughs> we'll, we'll ponder that one. Yeah. Um, Peter Gett <laughs> says, I was disappointed with Barbarian. It was just another woman in peril flick. While watching it, I made up my own scenario thinking, what if it turns out she actually didn't book the Airbnb and was a deranged killer and it went in another direction? We can't really I mean, there, the movie, there's, there's another movie out there like that. that uh, yeah. It's called The Rental. Yeah, I, was like, I was like, this is a different movie. Yeah. It might have still been good, but it's a different movie. I don't know. <laughs> Steve Carney says, Barbarian is probably my favorite movie of 2022. I'm getting nervous that a Blu-ray release hasn't been announced. Hopefully it won't live exclusively on streaming like The Empty Man. Yeah, that I, Colin, you were talking about that before we recorded last week. And that's crazy to me that it still hasn't been put out on Blu-ray, especially because yeah. it was a hit. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, that's what I say. I know uh, at some point, uh, Shout Factory does have a licensing deal with, mm-hmm. with 20th Century Fox, so it could be at some point Shout Factory gets a license, Yeah, but it doesn't seem like Fox is interested in putting out anything. Well, and then it was, a, we said, I think before, that was a theatrical movie, Yeah, yeah. but they're not doing anything that's like made for streaming mm-hmm. uh, is not getting uh, physical release anymore. The age is over. It's over. We just got to yeah. let it go. Unfortunately, the superior format, like Beta, <laughs> is uh, being dumped for, for streaming. Well, streaming quality is getting better. I was like, you're preaching to the choir. I haven't yeah. bought a DVD in a really long time. Yeah. Yeah. In a really, really yeah. long time. Uh, I think the last one I bought was Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Extra features, right? Yeah, the last time it. I bought one. Yeah. Uh, Millitime 86 says, I'd never heard of Barbarian until all of the freak show held it in such high regard in the best and worst episode of 2022. Thank you all members and fans, because this was great. There was a yeah. suspense, shock, horror, what the fuck moments, just all around awesome. And finding out who directed this floored me, knowing him from the 2009 sex comedy, Miss March. Yes. And this was the total opposite end of the spectrum. Nice directorial debut. Yeah. Did you guys, did you guys highlight the comedy of the scene of him using the tape yes. measure in, yes. in the yes. torture yeah. dungeon? Yeah. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was fucking yeah. hilarious. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I love Zach that Kreger scene. is the guy mm-hmm. who was the, the director on this. Yes. That was so funny. Mm-hmm. Just totally ignoring a clear dungeon. <laughs> Uh, to measure the what you square foot. what you missed and that the other writers were referencing is Sean was on Bill Skarsgård's side of he would need to see the bed in the bucket and the camera to believe her and that's what I was losing my mind about is that I said well you would die then Sean your curiosity would kill you <laughs> yeah he said he would need to see it <laughs> after watching that movie he Somebody still came comes to that up conclusion and tells you, I found this thing this horrible thing in the basement would you have to confirm it. Or would you go? No. I'm yeah. Not go Sean, down. Sean was like, I would need to see it. Yep, to he see was it. on Bill Skarsgård's side with that. Well, he's a white dude. Yeah. So. And I was like, the, I said, like, this is the difference between men and women. Yeah. You know, like, <laughs> a woman's not going to go check it out. She's going to run yep. like hell. Yep. Well, Nicholas Namington says, I was coming home from school. Oh, sorry. This is about The Fly, which oh, we did. This is another listener choice. I've been, I've been thinking a lot about that movie since I we have watched too. it. I've it's been really stuck about with me. Yeah. Yeah. Was, yeah. Man, what a great movie. It is That's a great, a great movie. movie. Yeah. It's a gross movie. Yeah, Nicholas Namington so thinks it's also a great movie. Yeah. But he says, I was coming home from school on the bus and passed a farm that had just been put out there Halloween pumpkins for sale. My mom later took me to Kmart to look at the Halloween costumes and later that night. We watched The Fly on HBO for the first time. Aww. For a young kid just starting to like girls and already he- head over heels in love with horror movies, The Fly is drenched in nostalgia for me. It's Romeo and Juliet for horror. Films. It that, is. That, you really set the scene oh there, God. man. Like, that <laughs> sounds like just the best memory. The perfect day. Like, buy your Halloween like, pumpkins. Yeah. You go to the hollo- the store to look at Halloween stuff. Yeah. And, and then, then you watch, watch The Fly. The fly. Mm-hmm. Oh, what a day. What a great day. <laughs> I can feel how good that memory felt. Yeah. <laughs> Did you drink cider too? Yeah. Like, that sounds wonderful. Sounds right. wonderful. Damn, I right. wish it was fall. Uh, I know, right? Well, I was like, man, fall so far away. <laughs> well, it rekindled the memory right yeah. there a little bit. Mm-hmm. Um, well, thank you again, each and every one of you, for writing in. We really appreciate yes, it. Yes, thank you so much. And now we're going to go around the table and tell you what we thought of tonight's movie, The Return of the Living Dead, starting with... Michaela. Start us off tonight. Yes, yeah, so this was like kind of my first time watching it. I had yeah. seen it before, but I was really, really drunk, so I, didn't re- I only remembered bits and pieces of it. But yeah, I definitely didn't know what to expect going into it because I thought the whole movie was going to be about Linnea Quigley. So, mm-hmm. um, And I'm... I kind of feel like those characters you can cut out altogether I and agree. I enjoy yeah. the rest of the movie just fine. Um, I, I, I 
I didn't expect to come out of this movie being like, I love watching these old men going on an adventure <laughs> right? together. Don't, forget the kids. I don't want them. I want the old guys. Right. Like, but and uh, Tom Matthews, I didn't realize he like had this, these kind of like comedic chops in him, especially like physical comedy. Because mm-hmm. like, I mean, in, he's great in Jason Six, but he's just kind of a dude. Like, there's nothing mm-hmm. special about him. He's just kind of a guy, you know. Mm-hmm. Um, so it's good to see him do some other stuff. And I really wish I had seen this as a kid. I think this is a movie. If you see as a kid, it just really captures your imagination. And, it does. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and like, I'm sure it like, because like the aesthetic can re- of it really appeals to kids. I think, and it's mm-hmm. just like the the spooky classic Halloween design, you know. Mm-hmm. But man, yeah, this could really freak you out, but also like enthrall you as a kid. So I show it to your kids. Yeah, I, I would say <laughs> show it to your kids. No, it's great. I'm, I mean, people love this movie. It has a huge cult following and I get it. It's wonderful. And I really enjoyed it. And I was really worried it wasn't going to live up to the hype, but it did. So mm-hmm. I'm definitely going to recommend it. Holly, what do you think? Yeah. So I've seen this before, but it's it's been a while. And this is one of those movies that it just kind of like was jumbled in my memory of horror movies and zombie movies um so like when we came down here tonight i even forgot we were watching i was like what are we watching and then my first question was is this the boring one or the fun one and colin's like it's the fun one I'm like okay good boring one i don't fucking Daily know or, I, yeah. probably <laughs> yeah Daily Prob- is boring. yeah i think that yeah probably like i said all these movies like of the deads they run together to me um but this one, like, as we were watching it, I was remembering and I was like, okay, yeah, this is the fun one. Um, yeah, this this movie's hilarious. I love the random slapstick tone of it. I think it's so funny. And I mean, it's no no surprise. Like, we all know that I love a horror comedy, so this is my jam. I do love a zombie movie. So yeah, this is this is this is up my alley. Um oh man, it was a fun movie. It's a real fun movie. It's gross. Um but it's also like charming. We were saying some of the effects are just very low budget. We could, you, know, you can see strings on the skeletons. You can see latex, and but it's 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 still good. Like there's still good effects, and it's fun. Um, yeah, I agree with you, Michaela. I think the young cast pretty much could be cut out of this movie. Just maybe just keep uh, Freddie and or is it Frank? Freddie, Freddy. yeah, Freddie and his girlfriend. I think you could probably just keep them. Get rid of everyone else. Oh, I don't man. know. What? I don't know. <laughs> I, or at least do it differently. Like maybe not like a whole gang. Maybe just like a couple that are just randomly hanging out in the cemetery. We're invested in the dad squad. Yeah, I'm, in, I'm invested yeah. in the dads. Like mm-hmm. they're the fun part of this. Um, But and like, yeah, like Linnea quickly. Fantastic. But she's so minor. And she's literally just there to be the naked girl. Mm-hmm. And That's it. like, I get it. But I don't know. Give me more. But. Yeah, this is a great movie. I know why it's a cult classic. It's hilarious. It's gross. It's entertaining. Like, it's never boring. It's entertaining the whole way through. Um, Yeah, it's fun. I definitely recommend it. And I would watch it again. Colin? Every year? Yeah. On Halloween or whatever. Yeah, this is Fourth fun. of July. I, that, see, that, like, I, <laughs> I didn't even catch that it was a Fourth of July movie. I, I saw that, like, they're all like, oh, it's so hot. And I, yeah. I was catching that it's a summer movie. Yeah. But I didn't even catch that it's a Fourth of July movie. Yeah. There you go. It's a pretty, holiday movie. You can bring it out every year. Yeah. I don't have any of the reservations you guys do. I think some of that might be colored by nostalgia for, mm-hmm. you know, when I saw it. But, I mean, this is damn near a perfect movie. I think the ending, you know, maybe some of the makeup effects are not the 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 actual, uh, like, star makeup effects. Just, like, oh, it's just the, the zombies that do it. Like, when they're going to bite people, it's like, it's just a person. Um and they're like well lit, so that's yeah. I guess what kind of calls it. It is a very well lit zombie movie. Yeah. yeah. Um. But no, I mean the the it the fun factor of it, like this. When I think of like eighties horror movies, I think Return of the Living Dead is probably maybe at the top of the list. This mm-hmm. is the vibe that I remember from that decade. Yeah. You know, uh, there's laughs, but the gore is like you know serious. Yes. Um. It's kind of, you know, tempered, I guess, by the amount of comedy that's around it. Mm-hmm. Um, the only thing, you know, I was thinking, like, uh, the the thing that reminded me, the last time I saw something, 
and maybe there has been something more recent, but the one that pops in my mind is Slither. Yeah, yeah. The James Gunn sure, movie like sure. nailed that kind of tone. Yep. Yeah. Um, Very that good comparison. Movie has seen this movie. Yeah. Oh yeah. 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 Oh, absolutely. Because I felt Slither was like when I saw that, I was like, oh, I haven't seen this type of movie yeah. in so long. The kind that's, of ensemble we got to deal with the thing that's, that's happening. That's a good double feature, actually. It was, yeah. It was, yeah. yeah. Slither is Night of the Creeps, and yeah, yeah, this yeah, movie yeah. put it together. Really is. All right. Yeah. And I like I liked the. Like the, we start with a really strong cold open, which I love, and then it ends with just everyone dies. Mm-hmm. Which yeah. I love mm-hmm. that ending. But that kind of actually did the ending. I remember when I first saw it, like it like did have like a creepy, you know, yeah, um, like oh shit, like you know they're gonna, you know they're all gonna die. Mm-hmm. Uh, I'm here, Freddie, <laughs> busting up through the the door, you know. Just he's never going to stop. It's like a Terminator or something. It's like I guess the horror of you just cannot kill these things, they yeah. will, and they think and they can run and they they just are going to kill you. Um, it's not like any other zombie movie, you know, in that way. And I don't think. Uh, I mean, obviously the sequels kind of go like, okay, we've got like our own kind of zombie mythology here that we can exploit, you know. So they kind of do it, but um, it has its own thing. I think. Um, this movie taught me several things. I mean, like the the escalation of how things are, keep spiraling out of control mm-hmm. also adds that kind of horror, creepy feeling of it. It's like you just like, oh, shit. You know, at this point, it's like this is out of your, yeah. you cannot do anything about this. Like there's not really any hope. It just keeps getting worse and worse. Yeah. And yeah. it does it. But in the direction, what he's doing, and I'm like, oh, this is how you do it. There's always more noise. There's, uh, you know, whenever the characters are over, always, always talking over each other and there's like moaning and growling and, you know, or not growling, but screaming or whatever, yeah. clanging. There's just shit in the background that just keeps that anxiety level up. Yeah. I'm like, oh, that's why it's such an anxious. And the guy who did the score, whose name is uh, escaping me right now, I can't see the poster to see who did, but um, he has this, um, it's a note that like is on a pitch bend. And it just kind of hangs, mm-hmm. you know, in some of these scenes. And I'm like, that creates, I guess, in me, like that kind of uh, tension. So it's like, even though it's a it's a comedy horror movie, it's like a horror, you know, it's a real horror movie. It oh, actually sure. works on you, mm-hmm. you know. Um, and the punk rock sensibility to it, I think, like gave it like a, a color to the the tone of the movie that, like, again, doesn't feel like really anything else. Um and the music, sometimes they're playing it so loud you can't hear like really what the cast is saying, mm-hmm. which on the other version you can, they take it out. You can mm-hmm. actually, it's all about, you know, what they're saying. I like, I like it better with that, you know, because it's, it's adding that, that anxiety, you know, yeah. of, uh, you know, I, the things are just kind of going crazy. Yeah. But, um, William Stout was a production designer. We should give a shout out to him too. Cause I think he designed a lot of it and designed some of the zombie stuff that later the effects guys would, um, uh, try to you know because i think he designed the tar man somebody oh, else okay. built it you know um and the you know whatever the the zombie with the the bisected zombie with the little <laughs> uh spinal column and all that stuff yeah i i love this movie yeah. love it unabashedly love it i think it's one of the greatest zombie movies of all time it might be more of a favorite than i mean george romero's stuff is more serious minded you know mm-hmm. um he's trying to make political statements i guess and be entertainment yeah. with his movies this one is just like well it's subversive but it just it wants to be fun you know more yeah. than anything it's like just out of the gate running fast fun entertaining 85 minutes or whatever it is mm-hmm. uh i would definitely 100 percent recommend the return of the living dead and that means it's free show approved because we all liked it yeah yep it's a fun movie. I'm sure Sean, Sean would also oh, like I'm it. Sure. I'm sure yeah. he would. And he would recommend that you watch the sequel. If he doesn't, he's fired. He did. He started yep. with Return of the Living Dead 3, I think. Yeah. Yep. Uh, so that means that you contractually, by listening to the show, you're obligated yes. to watch it. Okay, so now you guys have voted. We voted for the most voted for a movie, and it was by a long shot. The most voted for movie. The movie they want. So this is covered. on you. Yeah. This is on you, not on us, yeah. if you don't like it. We're watching Halloween Ends. Not looking forward to watching it again. <laughs> <laughs> I'll go in with an open mind, but... but well, it's um, going to be interesting because we're going to have Sean in the show, and Sean is uh, suffering from some kind of... Um, 
Stockholm Syndrome. So He has well, watched it, what, three or four times at this I know, point? He hated it so much, he watched it three or four times. He so watched now, it t- two times in like a 24-hour span Yeah, when it first came out. As yeah. a massive Halloween yeah. fan, it was injured so badly yep. that he had to expose himself to it over and over again. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. We're, we're, we're going to we hear will, what we, he will perf- we will perform this psychoanalysis <laughs> next week. Yes. I don't know if I'm ready. <laughs> like I, I, I'm going to have to have like a therapy session yeah. in preparation for this. I think. <laughs> like, should, should I be drunk? Yeah. Should I be stoned? Like, how should we do this? How are we going to take the edge off? I yeah. don't even know. I was going right, to go well, in cold. We're going to watch it and we're going to go, okay, here's Halloween ends on a second view for. Yep. For us, right? All yes. three of us. Yeah, this I have not the watched one. this shit show again. Nope, no, neither have I. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay. Well, right. um, maybe our opinions will... Have, we got to go open yep. mind. Open mind. Maybe yep. it'll change. We'll see something we didn't see before. And it'll be great. You asked for this. That's yes. right. Halloween ends next ends. week on the Saturday Night Freak Halloween Show. Halloween may also end <laughs> next week on the Saturday Night Freak Show. <laughs> <laughs> well, we hope you'll join us for that. <laughs> At your own risk. <laughs> I guess. All right. And until then, ladies and germs, the basement is going dark.